Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is my first video and maybe my only ever, but um, I wanted to go through a device I made to roast coffee. I read about it online from a guy named Larry Cotton who made these devices over the course of um, like 10 years. He made a whole bunch of different ones and the latest version he had was about uh, 60 bucks in parts and looked like it worked really well and I wanted to roast coffee at home for a long time but never wanted to invest in a really expensive machine until uh, if and when I knew I, it was worth doing and it was something I really liked so I wanted to check it out and build my own device and so in going through it the reason a big reason I'm making this video is because there were a few little tweaks I made um, I looked at Larry's instructions and I'll link to those and I also found a different video of someone who made one and I, I'll link to that one also um, but I had a few issues that I didn't really see addressed there that I thought it would, might be helpful if somebody wants to build this thing um, and as you can see I've already roasted a few pounds of coffee with it it works really well uh, and I'm pretty happy with it so hopefully this will help anyone else who might, who might want to build one of these things and uh, with that, I'll get into going through it, how it works, the components, and uh, I'll provide a full list of all the details of, of what I bought and, um, and provide links to those. So here's the device. This, again, is a Larry Cotton invention-based uh, design. It's a few, moder few moder modifications I made here and there, but... Generally, it was it's his uh, his doing here. So um, the key component is this flour sifter with a uh, he calls it a wobble ro or wobble wheel or something like that. Um, you just have a 45 degree angle. I use a eight inch pie tin uh, pizza pie tin that I got aluminum and cut it down so it kind of fits right in there and then. The hardest part I, the, the hardest thing to do was make this 45 degree angle um, with, I used an aluminum rod I actually bought because I couldn't find anything. The, the other video that made this talked about using uh, a tent pole or something like that, but I, I had to buy something because I couldn't get anything else to work reliably. And I put double nuts on the end there to make sure it stayed in place because it's really important to get that in the middle and to make it really sturdy uh, otherwise it can get jammed or not work very well um, the other thing that was a problem for me was this lock nut most lock nuts or common lock nuts have nylon on them to, to make the locking uh, to make it lock basically um, but when this thing gets hot the nylon I guess would melt and it would start to turn down the threaded rod which was very problematic the first time I tried it uh, I also designed this screwdriver thing a little bit differently I just mount it on a block so it slides back and forth and I'll show you how that works uh, one thing that wasn't clear to me from the videos or the instructions was you actually have to wire this screwdriver it's a battery operated screwdriver so you have to wire the battery terminals uh, into a actual plug um, and another thing that they did was they made it so that as soon as you touched they put a relay or something in there so when you touch the end of that to the uh, slifter it would just start automatically I just made it so it turns on um, when I turn the power on it turns on this, this screwdriver and also the heat gun which is mounted down here all this is pretty similar to what Larry did in terms of I used some wires under there to kind of hold it in place and uh, I didn't really secure this thing it just kind of slides in and and sits there it's pretty straightforward I use a different air gun than Larry listed but um, I'm pretty sure any of them work if you just have a generally a decent air gun or a hot air gun and so this is what it looks like from the top I you can see I uh, drilled some holes for the air to go back down out of there um, and it just kind of sits in there this has been used a few times like I said I use this pe uh, the rim of the pizza pan Obviously, it's not very pretty, but it really works pretty well to keep this thing 
kind of locked in there so when it's running it goes like this and uh, you get it lined up oops when you get it lined up it just keeps it locked in there so it doesn't go anywhere and then I just use a little clip there to keep it in place because uh, it will sort of vibrate back out a little bit but other than that um, that's more or less it I will roast some coffee shortly but here's what it looks like in motion uh, you can see the screwdriver, screwdriver running um, this is already heating up down in there and uh, yeah, that's it. That's how it works. And uh, so let's go and get some coffee going. All right, so this is what it looks like in action. You can hear it's kind of loud, but uh, you can see the green beans I poured in there. Um, I, I get it started and then pour them in. So I don't know when I was still using that nylon nut, it would jam sometimes when I tried to start it from having it already filled. But I haven't had any problems since I replaced that lock nut with one with metal uh it's a metal lock nut that has some metal like extra um ridges i guess in it to prevent it from uh, to make it lock so it works i haven't had any problems once i switched to that metal lock nut all right so while this is going i just keep this on low the whole time um i tried high on the heat gun but it really fried the beans and I've been doing it all on high I mean all on low uh, takes about 14 minutes or so um, depending on the how big the beans are I've, I've roasted a couple different kinds so um, that's about what we're looking at 14 minutes anyway while I'm letting those roast I have this uh, I also built this thing to cool the beans. Um, I saw a couple of DIY, apparently you're supposed to cool them within four or five minutes to basically room temperature. Uh, I don't know why, I just read about it and it seems pretty universally accepted. So, uh, But in order to do that, I was using a, a leaf blower and a colander, but it was kind of... Uh, prone to error I would say so I've got a little pot uh, that I had laying around I bought this metal colander kind of thing I don't even know what it's for uh, at a at a reuse it kind of place for like four bucks and then I had a pump an air pump for a air mattress or something laying around so um, I'm this will be the first time I'm using this but I saw similar DIY versions online and uh, look forward to trying that one out. Well, I got a little bit of a sprinkle here, so I had to move it in a little bit out of the rain. Um, it's really not raining very hard, but not very conducive to roasting coffee. Um, so you can see they're getting darker. Um, it's probably a good medium roast right now. Um, I like it dark, that's why I do this, so it'll be going for a few more minutes yet. And then we will take it out and cool it down. Um, should be able to see some a little bit of smoke coming up there and uh, you can hear it popping like almost like popcorn and uh, I guess this kind of shell or husk pops off when it splits so that's kind of what you get you get a lot of that almost like a skin that comes off of them and it's dried up and either floats away or uh, that's what I think makes a lot of the smoke. There it is still gone. We are probably about 10 minutes in. All right, so we are back again. Um, all done. You can see it's still smoking and crackling um, in there. Let's see what it looks like when I dump it out into my cooler here. There we go. All right. So now what we're gonna do is hit the, get the air flowing on that and uh,
All right, guys. That's it. I'm uh, done roasting these beans. There they are. Nice and roasted. Got about a half pound right there. Um, got the machine running for the next batch behind me. Anyway, if you liked the video, I'd say like and subscribe, but frankly, I'm probably never going to make any more videos, but feel free to share it with anybody who's interested in this device, and uh, hopefully, if they have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll answer them as best I can. Alright, thanks a lot for watching.